what I got for you guys today is the showcase of the new TCG exclusive archetype, the Ashen deck. <laughs> I'm still a bit under the weather, so that's why uh, my voice may sound a little weird in this one, but it's cool, right? Um, new Dark Souls deck, right? Souls like Yu-Gi-Oh! Seven cards for the archetype, and uh, they work in a kind of interesting way, but it, there's also there's a lot of ways where the deck uh, kind of just doesn't work and we're going to get into a lot of that today i'll try to keep this one quick because uh uh this as cool as uh some of this new support is uh like vados and opsidime ash and city or uh hero and priestess and king which uh i've seen all the memes they're all like based on dark souls characters so it's very clearly, it's, it's not even trying to hide what the theme is, the artwork looks great. The actual playstyle we'll have to get into. So they are dark pyros that all revolve around the field spell. So the field spell doesn't really do anything by itself. It needs to be popped. It's really only a piece of a bigger puzzle. There's a sort of like standard line of play that Konami wants you to do, and if you watched their showcase they kind of uh show that like the standard line of play is for you to wipe the board and then to rebuild the board and then for you to go for game with exactly 8,000 damage the awkward thing about that is that that is not that easy in this deck if, if anything that is one of the most hardest things to do because there's a lot of contradicting support by contradicting what i mean is this quick play spell is not an ashen card right just about every other card except for this big dragon guy is ashen and priestess are level four pyro which is searchable by bonfire searches ashen cards when it's summoned so it cannot access three of the cards of the archetype well it, it, it can access the trap it cannot access these two it cannot access the quick play spell or the monster and that is a problem because the quick play spell sets up just about everything if you don't have the quick play spell you need a two to three card combo to do the same thing that the quick play spell can do. So it's a little sad that the deck kind of has like this, this issue. And it is a very like rewarding deck if you can pull off the combo because you get to Vados and then you pretty much have the choice between popping Vados and clearing the entire field. Or you can choose to pop Vados and set up your field. Or if it's like a turn three scenario, you can choose to take the Vados and go for game, which with all four uh, monsters of this, or the three monsters of the Ashen archetype plus Vados have exactly 8,000 points of damage, which is a very fun fact that Konami uh, wanted to point out <laughs> their showcase video. It's easier to show you. Okay, so here's the normal combo for Ashen. It's, as I, as I said, it's starting with Awakening of Vados. And from Vados, you get to place the field spell in either field zone but when you place it in your opponent's field zone you get to add a level five or higher dark pyro monster from your deck to your hand there aren't a lot of monsters that fit that description dark and pyro is not really a thing but luckily for us vados is the perfect card for that description now once we enter our main phase vados is allowed to pop a copy of our field spell regardless of whose side it's on so even if it's on your side or the opponent's side it can pop it and then summon itself to the opponent's field it always gets summoned to the opponent's field by its effect and that will kind of be a recurring theme it's like i don't know a boss rising from the ashes um then after and this is all one effect right so after it pops the field spell it gets to summon itself and then it has the option to either add or set an Ashen Continuous Trap from your deck. Now, the Ashen Continuous Trap that we get is Ashen for Eternity. And Ashen for Eternity reads, when this card is activated, you can search a Vados or an Ashen monster from your graveyard to your hand. So it lets you recycle some of your resources. Unfortunately, and this is going to come up in a bit you're gonna find that it's pretty awkward to actually recycle stuff in this deck um there aren't that many cards that actually get your stuff back from the graveyard instead the deck kind of expects you to build the whole board again from scratch rather than reusing the cards that you already have meaning you have to play more copies of things to keep the combo and engine going rather than it being a self-sufficient engine that you know 
all digs into each other and then lets you recycle it with with like a trap card that says once per turn you can add an ashen or a vados from graveyard to hand it's only on activation and this is a continuous trap it's not leaving the field once like unless there's some reason for this to leave the field it's not going to leave the field unless your opponent clears it so only having one chance to recycle is kind of like an awkward point about this deck where i think a second wave of support would really come in handy so that's the first reason why a second wave of support would come in handy but let's keep going and figure out why um so when obsidime is destroyed i'm gonna call it obsidime just because i feel like that's a cool name um it gets to special summon an, an ashen monster from your deck and the one that we chose is king of the ashen city and so during your main phase you'd be able to special summon an ashen monster from your hand but if your opponent controls a monster with 2800 or more attack which uh vados again is the perfect description but also if they happen to have a kaiju uh radian is 2800 exactly uh, a lot of the higher level ones are 2800 and more you get to summon an ashen monster straight from your deck basically because they control ashen we kind of get to keep playing i mean because they control vados we get to keep playing and so this is why i'm saying the the quick play spell sets up everything because we got two vados from the quick play two ashen from the quick play two priestess all off of one card so we're going well so far and now priestess has the effect of when she's summoned she gets to add an ashen card from deck to hand right and now we're going to see the final um ashen card like these these are all the cards of the archetype that you see on board and, and in grave right now now you're probably wondering right um it's great that you can get to King and to Priestess, but Hero is level seven, and we don't have our field spell currently on the field, right? Because all three Ashen monsters can special summon themselves while you control the field spell, but we don't have a field spell, so what is Hero going to do? Um, unfortunately, we are forced to tribute summon it because we have not used our normal summon, and Awakening of Vados locks us into um, Pyro for from deck and extra deck anyway, so it's not even like we can make any cool plays with like SP or anything like that this turn. Once we resolve Vados, like we are locked into Pyro, so we might as well make the most of it, right? So we go into Hero here, and Hero has a quick effect to pop any Pyro on the field and then place another copy of the field spell from your deck into your field zone if you popped Vados. So because we pop Vados here we get to place field spell now that being said just remember that vados when it's sent from the opponent's field to the graveyard um in any way not just being destroyed but also by um let's say they use it for like a link or like a synchro summon because it's level nine its effect would still trigger on the summon of the new monster so however it's sent to graveyard it becomes a board wipe the issue is that there's no card to protect your monsters from being destroyed by its effect. There's no card in the archetype that protects your monsters, right? If the whole game plan, like first off, if you're gonna lock me into Pyro, and then the whole game plan is to set up this monster that I'm giving to my opponent to then destroy it, and then for me to go for game after that, why is it that I cannot protect the monsters that I had to work to build this situation like yes there's a bit of a gameplay loop with with that ash and right it's kind of like a you're redoing the boss battle over and over and, and as long as you have hero you'll be able to continue this loop as long as you have hero plus a field spell i mean hero plus a plus ashen for eternity you'll be able to to continue the loop maybe two or three times you'll be able to board wipe they really expect you to just wipe the whole field and then rebuild your board again like rebuild your side of the board again which to be honest just doesn't make sense because with link monsters being so prevalent this card not being restricted from being used as any sort of material there's nothing stopping my opponent from just making an sp like what's the point of me putting this on their field if all they're going to do is use it as soon as it comes out right like think about this let's say i had all three ashen monsters still on field um, because i already have the field spell so let's say i already had three ashen monsters on field and then i let vados on their board during their turn main phase one comes around they summon one monster they only use one card to get rid of three monsters or get rid of my entire front row 
or because basically what they can do is they can use like any monster plus Vados, go into SP Little Knight, no effect on the banish, but um, the ability to dodge the um, the board wipe because you have an SP and I basically lose everything that I worked hard to set up. It's stupid. I don't think, <laughs> I think this deck needs a little more support before we can um, really play this properly. Um, end phase, Obsidian gets to shuffle back another copy of itself, or not shuffle back, it places another copy of the field spell into the bottom of the deck and then you draw a card. So it guarantees you won't draw the same card that you just put it, put it back into deck, right? Which, you know, at this point was another copy of field spell, but I mean, it was another copy of uh, Awakened, but yeah. So <clears throat> we activate Ashen for Eternity and then we get to add the Vitos back to hand. So now Vidos, if we want to use it during our opponent's turn, we can, we can, we can summon Vidos, popping our own field spell and setting another continuous trap. Now here's the catch about the continuous trap, right? You have two options. You either pop the Vidos with the continuous, tra uh, with the hero, or you s snatch steal it with the continuous trap. Now, if you snatch steal it, all your opponent's monsters lose 2,800 attack because they lose attack equal to his original attack. Um, this also does really well to counter cards like Triple Tactics and uh, Change of Heart. If they happen to steal another monster, you can also steal that monster back. It doesn't have to be Vidos. But because you own the Vidos, you're able to steal it back like frame one. If I'm expected to go for a game using Vidos, Hero, Priestess, and King... And I cannot even wipe my opponent's field. I have to lower all their attack position monsters to zero. Still potentially dealing with negates or disruptions along the way. And it takes me um, all this setup to, to get through that. All these cards are once per turn. If my opponent negates any of these, I don't have alternative lines of play. Depending on the build that you're on. So it's a little weird that like the continuous trap does not do more it's weird that the monsters don't do more like i would expect a card like king because it's called king to protect you from destruction but it doesn't um or even priestess to protect you from destruction you know but it doesn't there's a lot of holes in the ash and gameplay loop at the moment not saying that it's terrible or that it's unplayable because it's definitely not there definitely is a strategy that can be found here and we'll get more into that as we go along but it's really hard to use so we're gonna go for priestess here priestess search another hero hero pop the vados get us another field spell and then you can board wipe right you can board wipe you have field spell next turn you can summon hero again boom and you also have ashen for eternity to recycle any of your ashen monsters right you would think a card with eternity in its name would not be would be able to recycle a card like once per turn as many times as you want right but somehow a card with ashen for eternity in its name is only usable once <laughs> i don't know why it's so weird we kind of got to do the funny thing right this deck's a little funny sometimes we got to do the funny thing we got a goblin berg goblin berg summon out priestess priestess effect now we get to field spell i was like oh okay cool oh uh, we got the field spell and we have priestess but how do we get to vados well, this really cool card called Infernal Flame Banshee that came out of Duelist Nexus, uh, she can detach one, search any pyro, regardless of level, right? Where Bonfire is only level four or lower pyros, Flame Banshee is any pyro in your deck, including Vados. Basically, any Ashen monster is searchable thanks to Flame Banshee. So now we can Vados <clears throat> and do the combo just like before. Obsidine, summon King. King, get you to Hero. And Hero can <clears throat> pop the Vados. Vados, place another Obsidine. We can keep going from here. Go into something like a little SP. Shuffle back, draw one. Now we Ashen for Eternity. And we get the setup again. We can Vados. Pop. So they've you know, very foolishly place two monsters. And this is again, the point where it's a little frustrating that there's nothing to protect you 
from your monsters being destroyed by card effects like i feel like that would be a better continuous trap than what this is something that protects you from being destroyed by card effects because then it won't just protect you from like vados it'll protect you from like other things like potential lightning storms or like maybe if if there's a card that said like ashen cards cannot be destroyed by card effects or maybe uh cards in your main monster zones cannot be destroyed by card effects something like that right so that you know you could still pop the field spell and you could still pop your opponent's monsters but you but your yours would not get affected by it right so opsidine summon priestess our priestess gets to search and our hero gets to board wipe but look at how much we lost like um and and even ip doesn't play around that because ip only stops us from being destroyed by by our, our opponent's card effects and unfortunately although vados was on the opponent's side of the field it still goes to our graveyard so because it's in our graveyard we just can't do anything you know to protect ourselves from it now i want to get a little spicier i want to sort of lean more into the pyro side of things with something like volcanic emperor so we go for our typical vados combo into king into priestess priestess search we're going to tribute summon again pop the vados get our field spell now we get to banish three pyro monsters to um to go for a volcanic emperor and the reason why this is good is because ashen for eternity search adds back the vados vados pops field spell field spell can get us right back into hero or into priestess that gets us into another hero so it's not even like we're um we're really that far off right so volcanic emperor inflicts 1500 after that it sets volcanic emission and volcanic emission its first effect is not really useful but its second effect is going to be really great because we can target a pyro monster on the field and inflict damage to our opponent equal to that monster's original attack meaning we get to give our opponent the vados again and then they get to take 2800 if you mix this with a transaction rollback that's double the damage with it, which is 5600 which would leave them at 900 life points the reason why that's significant is because when they have 900 life points each time your opponent special summons a monster the very last line of volcanic emperor you inflict 500 damage to them meaning it's sort of like a checkmate scenario where they can't really play the game properly because you have a card that can game them that can burn them for game it's sort of like flare metal and i'm sure with certain hands because there are certain hands where you can summon a rank seven that you can go for like volcanic emperor maybe plus a flare metal or something assuming you have enough pyros to go for that so it's a really cool play because it, it puts it puts more pressure on your opponent so we ashen for eternity vados is gonna pop we're gonna get the uh, volcanic uh volcanic emission search for hero and we could also steal the vados right So you guys kind of get the point, right? Even even with three summons, they're down to like 2,200. So it's like their first priority might be to remove Volcanic Emperor from the field. But by that point, they've probably already taken at least 1,000 damage. And yeah, it makes it really easy for you to like go for game if you can resolve a Volcanic Emperor. Or if you can possibly get a second Volcanic, uh, volcanic uh, emission going on or a uh, transaction rollback. So now I want to show something even spicier than before, which is um, alternative engines. And there's a bunch of them that you can use. You can use Labyrinth, Super Heavy. Uh, the one that I kind of like right now is Dynamorphia because although it's less consistent than some of the other builds, um, the ceiling that you get from resolving Dynamorphia Frenzy is crazy. So let's get into it. So let's say which is again it's less consistent because it's something of a three card combo you may need to play bonfire um in this build right because i think in the normal ashen deck i don't think bonfire is actually like that much of a staple like yes it's good for consistency but i don't think it's necessary because ultimately the quick play spell does everything 
and bonfire is kind of just there to do the priestess like bonfire is just there if you don't want to lock yourself into pyros for the turn but if you just want to go through the normal route and you don't care if you get a pyro locked or lot or, or not then bonfire isn't as necessary but if you don't want to get pyro locked then bonfire is necessary that's kind of going to be how you weigh um the options for bonfire and i can tell you right now there are no generic pyro links there's two pyro link monsters in the game as of this moment the brain kids link to um and the gold pride link to neither of which are generic both of them require specific materials so there is no link summoning if you activate that quick play spell meaning it's kind of tough there is a garunix rank 8 but that's that's a different story so we go priestess we go priestess to get hero we go Theresia to get a uh, dynamorphia frenzy and we get frenzy because frenzy gets us into the best fusion so that's that's why right and because the priestess was special summoned we were able to go into banshee and banshee was able to search us for vados because again it searches any level pyro so we pop obsidine set our eternity obsidine summon king king summon another hero hero pops and because we haven't actually used any of the summoning conditions besides for priestess um or because we haven't used hero summoning condition this turn we get to use it now and now we have access to two level sevens this could also be a play for two level eights but i think this play might be a little stronger because we get to go draco sack draco sack detach one summon two tokens link both tokens it's a double link spider g g golem crystal heart revive a link spider and go to heat soul so now we have a play to to um to have us a consistent draw engine now this is like treading dangerous ground when mixed with the dynamorphia engine which i can completely concur that it's not the smartest idea to play this particular combo with dynamorphia this this particular combo could be made like without the frenzy this could be made using any level four there's no level four like it's not specifically for dynamorphia but it's just the extra push that you get with an with a rex drum and the recursion of the dynamorphia stuff on your field i think is worth the trouble is worth the life points so we pay a thousand we go into uh we, we get awakening of vados we go sp and we could still resolve this awakening of vados because we have more field spells and we could search more copies of vados from our deck but we're not going to right so we obsidine draw one boom now frenzy can only be used during the main phase so it is kind of rough if they have any sort of removal for it but ultimately they may be more worried about like the sp and the heat soul than they are about this also for the potential vados that might you know come back with ashen for eternity so once it hits their main phase they do something then you can um activate your frenzy and i did kind of sequence this wrong because uh, i do believe heat soul should have been before the frenzy actually no um heat soul should be after you summon rexstrom like unless your board is like being threatened of being wiped you shouldn't resolve heat soul until after you summon rexstrom and i'll show you why in a second so we got to mill uh another dynamorphic monster from our deck plus stealth burger from our action deck summon out rexstrom and now rexstrom has an effect where um, you can pay half your life points and the attack of all monsters your opponent currently controls become equal to your life points. Your life points are pretty low right now, right? So let's say we didn't heat soul, pay a thousand. We would be at 3,500. Now, when we're at 3,500, if we resolve Rexterm's effect and Rexterm then basically uh destiny hero plasmas our opponent's entire board because they cannot activate monsters to have a greater attack than our life points meaning monsters with like ignition effects or monsters 
that are summoned later on that have more than 1750 will not be able to activate their effects at all. But because it'll be at 1750, you still have enough to pay for Heat Soul one more time. When you pay for Heat Soul and you have 2000 or less, after you pay the 1000, you can activate his effect and go into another Cybers Link 3 or lower monster from your extra deck. And there is one that you can go into that's really good and uh, that I'll show right after this because I forgot to put it in for this combo. But you get to go for Rexterm and boom, right? So Rexterm makes Dereza's attack 1250. And just be wary that you have to activate this before they actually summon a monster. Um, unless their very first action is to summon a monster, try to resolve Rexterm before they actually summon anything and you should be good to go. In terms of your life points, I know it's treading dangerous territory. Every Dynamorphia trap card can banish itself to protect you from damage, some from effect damage, some from battle damage. If you're being threatened with game on like your SP or something, just try to remember that you can protect yourself from battle damage using that. Also, because of Rexterm's being able to pay half his life points, um, he could potentially stop your opponent from not only being able to make big link monsters, but also from having the attack points to swing into your SP or something like that, because your life points will be so low that it's likely that they may not be able to actually summon any monsters that, that can swing at you. They might have to big brain like a Bistial or, or, or something, maybe. Like if they big brain a Bistial, I think that'll be... We are treading dangerous territory, don't, don't get me wrong, but I just think it's really interesting what the deck can do. So the other Link 3 or lower Cybers that you could summon with uh, Heat Soul is S-Force Justify, because Justify, you can summon it to the extra monster zone, right? And then it'll be pointing to your opponent's field. Now, while it's pointing to your opponent's field, you can, it has a quick effect where you can target an effect monster your opponent controls, negate its effects, and then move it to a zone that it points to. And then when he attacks, he can banish all monsters that he points to at the same time. So you can kind of like simultaneously negate their stuff and set it up so that you're gonna clear the board during your turn after resolving Heat Soul that much. And you still have your cards like your Solemns and your Iron Thunder Hammers because that was all off of two, three cards. We drew twice, once off the of Fuel Spell, another time off of uh, Heat Soul, or we drew th two times off Heat Soul. So you should have something else in your hand to protect you from monsters being summoned or things happening. And let's go into some of these other builds. So a super heavy build would basically be focusing entirely on Banshee. Unfortunately, the focus on Banshee would kind of make Vados like harder to main because, because Vados conflicts too much with the super heavy engine. You cannot resolve Vados and then resolve super heavy. You can resolve a super heavy and then resolve Vados, but by that point, it's like, what's the point right like super heavy already got you into most of what you needed but for access to the field spell this could be good right so just for placing maybe if you want to place a field spell to your zone and you already have access to priestess then that's also full combo but i'm sure you guys can understand why it's straight it's pretty straightforward right super heavy mixed in a deck like this could probably work wonders snake eyes using the fact that bonfire is like the common denominator in both ashen and snake eyes its ability to pivot between getting you a populace or getting you a priestess will be very helpful for building your board and the snake eye stuff goes absolutely crazy and i don't think it needs its normal summon if you can if you open bonfire or like one for one this deck definitely does not need a normal summon so you can definitely go for the priestess stuff in a lot of hands and then you have access to the Promethean Princess OTK line, Selene Access Code OTK, thanks to Diabal Star being a spellcaster. And uh, you still have the potential to make a Banshee because, you know, priestesses are level four, in case you open two of them. And now this is maybe one of the more interesting ones as well. Um, Labyrinth, although I hate Labyrinth with every fiber of my being, um, Ariane being able to send traps to summon level four lore fiends from your deck. Basically, we would use Ariana in a way where she's never been used before. We would use her to summon Ariana from deck, and then we can have, we can search to big welcome and have access to a rank four. So kind of like the, um, the, the Dynamorphia line, we get access into another engine on top of being able to 
set up the ash and engines uh combos so it's it's really good and big welcome is really scary with uh lovely because you know being able to like bounce and being able to pop cards on your opponent's field in hand after activating trap cards can be very significant for changing the flow of a game because uh you can do this before you resolve vitos and not really get punished for it uh vitos also works in this deck making it slightly more consistent than than the dynamorphia version i think this is a good um list and i think it's a good place to end the video um there's definitely more combos if you guys want to see more combos let me know in the comment section down below this has been uh ashen the only secret rare is going to be vados the rest are going to be like ultras and supers and commons so let me know what you guys think of uh this deck in the comment section below um i definitely think they need a second wave of support but are you guys planning to, to pick it up anyways do you think bonfire is worth worth it in this deck i don't but you guys can let me know that's been all for now this has been your boy distro signing out